there's not much to go on, but that's where you come in. Dexter Morgan, forensics expert. He's drifting further toward Kurt. He was probably a murderer. Yeah, and so are you. Wow, that's fair. Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm going to look at Dexter New Blood Episode 7 by looking at the description, the teaser trailer, and the promotional photos that Showtime released. I'll be breaking the teaser down, then I'll speculate on what this all might mean for Skin of Her Teeth, and then I'll discuss some of the popular theories that are kicking around after Episode 6. If any of that sounds like spoilers to you, then this is your chance to leave. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. The description for episode 7 reads, Dexter is worried that a serial killer may have set its sights on someone he cares deeply about. So he turns from predator to protector, a role he's not comfortable playing. Meanwhile, Angela arrests someone from Iron Lake who may be the culprit of a cold case that is near and dear to her heart. Dexter and Harrison run into some more bumps in the road in their relationship, leading Harrison to a very dangerous person as his father figure. And I'll come back around to that because most of it is touched on in this teaser. That opens with Angela saying there's not much to go on, but that's where you come in. Dexter Morgan, forensics expert. They're in the cave where she found Iris. It looks like it's still the same night. And I suppose she's doing just what she said. She needs help. She wants to find out if there's anything here that she can go on. We hear Deb say that he's drifting further towards Kurt, and there's a funny back and forth between them where she points out that both of the people who are father figures in his life right now are killers. It looks like Harrison and Dexter are still distant after the therapy session, and he fears that this is driving him towards his relationship with Kurt. It looks as though he left another full plate of food behind, and I love how Jack Alcott is doing his best Michael C. Hall impression in this shot right here. There's a couple of shots of Dexter sneaking into what I presume is Kurt's office, considering Matt's high school graduation picture is in a frame on the desk. Then the two men are sitting across from each other in a booth at Kurt's truck stop. He says, there was a time when I thought you and I would be friends out loud, and Dexter thinks, except you kill innocent women and I kill guys like you. While that conversation is going on, Angela and Dex arrive at Kurt's cabin in her police car. No real indication here how they got there, but we do see her shoot the lock on the storm door so they can access the basement, and they do go in. This is a little odd, I think. It's just her and her estranged ex-forensic specialist boyfriend. Shooting the lock seems like a really informal way of entering as part of an official investigation. I guess we'll have to wait and see what's going on there. Then there's a sequence of Kurt getting booked at the station. They're taking his photo and his prints, and we see them bag his personal belongings. It looks like bad news for Kurt and Dexter, too, since the trailer ends with him thinking about how much he'd like to get him on his table. Problem solved, then. No more Iron Lake serial killer, right? Well, other than having a weird room that clearly looks like a kind of cell that's wired with cameras, the only thing we know they're sure Kurt is guilty of at this point is lying about Matt and thus obstructing an investigation. Plus, he must not be an idiot if he's been getting away with killing for so long. So it seems likely that he'll make moves to destroy any evidence after Dexter got that look inside the basement. The arrest feels like it might just be for lesser charges, and they won't be able to hold him on those. Based on what we've seen and what it says in the episode description, everything's pointing to a big showdown between Kurt and Dexter. All of that being complicated by the fact that Harrison is more drawn towards Kurt right now than he is to his father. If they do find out he's the killer, and then they do lock him up, it kind of makes you wonder how the rest of the season would play out. There's also not really any connective tissue here either. She was drawn to the caves because she thought that Kurt didn't want her to go there, but now that she's found Iris, can she be sure that that's what Kurt was worried about? And then beyond that, how would that connect him to all of her other missing girl cases? I think the most likely thing is that Kurt did kill Iris, or if not that, then he played a role in hiding the body or something. Iris being central to Angela's story, and Kurt being responsible for the clue that brought her there, there's not a whole lot of room for natural feeling twists. Because this happened a long time ago, and it seems like the other girls went missing after, I think there's a really good chance that this is the first person that Kurt killed, and somehow the ritual we've seen from him is him reliving what happened at that time. Where it gets confusing is the whole idea of the embalming the bodies and what's going on there. 
theory wise, it feels like after episode six that most of the Molly theories were actually wrong or they were off. Plus, the idea that Ed Olson was Audrey's real father doesn't seem possible anymore either. I was wrong on that one. I thought that was pretty much a given. But in the last episode, we found out that Angela was married to her biological father, which makes it seem like he was who he was and he did actually die. The other theory there that seems to be put to rest was that Iris was her real mom and that we would find out that she didn't just run away like she thought, but that she was murdered. If what Audrey told Harrison was true, that her birth mom was white, that her father was Seneca, and that he was married to Angela and they all lived together as a family until he died, well, that kind of makes it hard for Ed to be her dad and Iris to be her mom. Doesn't mean there won't be twists there, but that's what we got. And for Molly, I do think she's still going to play a big part in the ending, but I don't think she came to Iron Lake looking for Dexter Morgan or following Harrison. She seems sincere in saying that she came there because she heard about Matt going missing. She was hoping to get in on a story for the podcast. But I mean, come on, with both of these characters, they're there for a reason. Her knowing so much about serial killers and doing research on ones that Dexter is involved with, that's going to play a part in why she's there. And the same thing with Ed Olson. There has to be a reason why they introduced that character. It's just that he hasn't shown up for a few episodes now, and most of the things that made sense don't look like they make so much sense anymore. It's funny how a lot of the stuff that's going on right now is distracting characters from what they were worried about before. Discovering the dead body of her high school friend who went missing not only means that Dexter's background is useful for her, it also means she's not busy looking into his story or thinking about how he came to be there as Jim Lindsay. After going to New York and knowing that something's going on with Kurt, Molly is also pointed in his direction. And even though Harrison is acting out violently, Dexter is a little bit more concerned with who he's hanging out with rather than what he's doing. So I said at the end of my last video that after the last episode, it's obvious he has a violent streak at the very least. So what is going on with him then, and why did he bring the blade when he went to visit Audrey? For the second part, the writer of episode 6 has said in a couple of interviews that Harrison didn't go there with the intention of harming her. He likes her, he's into her, and the razor was more about him not wanting to leave it at home since Dexter goes through his things. And he still doesn't trust people, so when he said he carried it for protection, he wasn't actually lying. From the promotional photos, we see that he will be working the job that includes a getup that makes him look like dear old dad in a kill room, and that he's not going to get away with breaking the other wrestler's arm scot-free. We see in this shot that his friends show up at the truck stop looking for vengeance. And it looks like Dexter might be lurking around there too, but if he intervenes in a fight, that might actually work against him. I'm not sure how that would go over with a teenager, having your dad step in when you're in a fight. And I mean, Harrison did break that kid's arm with very little provocation. It wasn't a normal response. Just like slashing Ethan with a straight razor wasn't a normal response to listening to a podcast. He said that he thinks about hurting everyone all the time, and I don't think he was being dramatic. That doesn't mean that he's like Dexter, although it does probably mean that Dexter will think he is, but there's something going on with the kid. And it's not that he's someone else impersonating Dexter's son. So he's kind of in a situation where he can go either way is what I guess, right? He can go full psycho or he can learn to keep it at bay or the third option being the Dexter option. I think that depending on what happens in the next episode, we'll have a better idea of how the ending is going to play out. We'll only have three more episodes after that, and it's kind of hard to speculate since they show Kurt getting arrested in this teaser. How that plays out and where he's at for the rest of the story is pretty important in trying to figure out what's going to happen. So I'll be curious to see how the arrest plays out and how that sets things up for Dexter versus the runaway killer. Even if Kurt was able to remove any evidence that might have been there, Dexter knows what a room like that means, and he kind of made that clear to Kurt when he was poking around. Also, Molly saw it, and rightly thought that she was about to be the next picture on Angela's carry-from-homeland board of missing persons. 
So even if he's not arrested for being a killer or isn't exposed for what's been going on at the cabin, there are a few people that know. Also, his son is dead and he lied about talking to him while trying to make it look like his credit cards were being used in New York City. And he's strangely going out of his way to make friends with Harrison. It's clear why Dexter doesn't like this, but that doesn't explain why he's doing it in the first place. In relation to that, I've seen a lot of theories about Kurt being on to Dexter, or at least suspecting that he might have killed Matt. There's the footage, the close proximity of the crime scene to his cabin, and he did meet him and sell him a gun right before it happened. That's all pretty thin. The best theory I read about Dexter making a mistake in killing Matt was a comment on my episode 3 video. It brought up that he might have had titanium rods or screws put in his leg after the boat accident, and why that stood out is because the camera kind of conspicuously lingered on his scar when Dexter went to his room to deliver the gun. If that is what that was supposed to imply, then the rod or screw would be left behind in the incinerator. And those things have serial numbers on them, so it could be proof that Matt's body was disposed of there, or at least that he is actually dead. I think that that was a great catch. I think that's probably going to come into play. I just can't see how to tie it all together with what's happening right now in the story. So I think that's a good place to leave things. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the last episode, what you think about this teaser, what you think is going to happen next, how have your theories changed after episode 6, and whatever else is on your mind. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.